environment that was so immersive that it could actually elicit these phys physiological responses in the player because we wanted them to react to the disturbing nature of the game and evoke stress, evoke fear, um, and then learn how to calm themselves down with it. That was the whole point. And so in doing so, we needed to make it an environment that was very convincing and really drew the player in um, on a deep level. And so that meant to us that we couldn't be reminding the player that they're in a game all the time. So this meant limiting the user interface and the heads-up display, so no health meters, for example, no scores, for example. Um, it had to feel as real world as possible. Um, we also, this applied to the music in which we didn't want to have a video game, traditional video game loop that reminded the player that they're in a game world. We want something that was very atmospheric, very dynamic. Um, and so we went for more of a cinematic uh, approach with the uh, audio style. Um, so much so that we actually created a system in which the transition from location to location uh, occurred on a very seamless level. It felt like it was scripted, but really it was reacting to the player changing location or the player's stress level as well. So as the player becomes more stressed, more anxious, the music es escalates in anxiety in response to that, but in a way that the player can identify um, it happening at the time. Just the, the fact that with the environment we get to play and be very surreal, which is always fun with, game, with any game, is because when you're not doing something that has to be photorealistic, you get to play a little bit with what's going on. It's like uh, the yard with all its many, how, uh, many ju uh, jutted together houses. It just, it's fun to deal with environments that get to, get to be surreal and actually have a purpose to be surreal. So for the art, we wanted to go for this very dark, surreal aesthetic, um, something that was uh, both nonsensical um, and also very beautiful uh, to both engage the, the player and give them an interesting space to be in, but also something that gave us the flexibility we needed to create a world in which every nook and cranny revealed some clue, some insight into the narrative of what happened to the player, what the trauma was. So we had to do things that were very abstract, um, but also recognizable. And so we looked to a lot of different resources in developing this aesthetic. Uh, we looked to film. Um, there are films such as The Cell that we looked at a lot of um, David Lynch's work uh, as well. We looked to fine art. We looked at a lot of the work by surrealists, a lot of the work done in cubism and other art movements on the more abstract level. Um, and of course, we looked at a lot of different games. Um, you know, we looked at what Eternal Darkness did with their sanity meter. We looked at uh, some of the work of uh, the Soul Reaver series. Um, we looked at Silent Hill, of course, for their psychological horror um, influences, and um, really a number of games, Psychonauts. Um, you know, the, even uh, like games like Flower and Flow from that game company and Journey, and seeing what they did on the abstract level there. Um, obviously, not as horrific, but. Um, uh, very immersive and beautiful and engaging nonetheless. Um, so, so that is really the, the take we took um, for the aesthetics. So a lot of content had to be made for this world to create uh, a place where there's clues everywhere um, and constantly uh, communicating to the player what happened through this embedded narrative. And as such, there, as such, there's a lot of assets that need to be made, a lot of art assets that need to be <laughs> created. And so, um, I did a lot of that. I have an art background, um, both mostly in illustration but also in 3D modeling. We also had a lot of help from uh, the Atlantic, um, Atlantic College in Puerto Rico, and their team there did a lot of the work. Um, in fact, it was actually an interesting relationship because uh, they did all of the clinic work. Um, so they did everything that's supposed to occur in the real life in the game, uh, real life. Um, and then our team at USC, um, so that was myself and uh, our producer, actually, Jesse Bush, did a little bit of work. Um, and with the help of resources like TurboSquid um, and CGTextures.com, we used a lot of those resources to help manage the amount of the volume of work that we had to do. And um, together, we were all able to generate this world um, with the two different styles. And um, I think it worked out really well.